Alright, so some of you know that I've been making a remote control car, um, and here it is, I finally finished it. So the reason it took me so long is because I was waiting for some parts to come in, namely these relays. It's not a very descriptive box, but these are uh, Sane Smart relays. I got a, uh, an 8 channel board and I've just been waiting for it to come in, and it finally did. So I've set it all up. Um, I'll explain all the technical aspects at the end of the video, but uh, for now I think I'll just show it to you. So here we go. Alright, so here we are outside on my driveway. It's a little bit wet, you can see, but it should be fine. So the way you turn this on is this battery pack right here. Um, it goes to the Raspberry Pi, the little computer that I'm using to power it, or to, to drive the whole system. So you flick that on. You wait a little bit because it has to run through all its boot up, and then it'll run a Python script that will connect to this. I'm using a Wii Remote to steer it partly for fun, or ma yeah, mainly just for fun. So once you have that on, there's also, kind of hard to see, um, there's a switch on the bottom here that is for the battery pack inside of the car. Um, it's on already, okay. So the reason I have two is because the motors run off of 12 volts, or no, they run off of 9 volts, whereas the Pi runs off 5, so, um, and it can only output 3.3 volts. So I have some relays set up to isolate the two circuits. So, uh, it's, it's probably had enough time to boot up, so on the Wii Remote here, um, you hit 1 and 2 at the same time, the blue lights will flash for a bit, and then I have it set to just turn on the first light when it's connected. You can actually control, all, there we go, see it's connected, just has that first light on. You can actually control all the lights, in, like you can set up the lights to do whatever you want pretty much, but I have it, um, I have it set to just do 1 when it's connected. So, when I hit the A button, it'll go forwards. When I hit the B button, it goes backwards. And then um, when I turn the Wii wheel to the left, it turns the front wheel to the left, so it turns left. And the same for right. Oopsies, that's backwards. And the same for right. So, pretty simple. It's kind of hard to show you since I'm holding the camera and the Wii remote at the same time. But, uh, yeah, it works pretty well. Here, let me just put down the camera and then give you a quick demonstration. Alright, so it's still connected. I just have the camera sitting on the ground, so I have both my hands free and I'll just drive it down for a bit. It's a little bit top heavy since I have all the components in that cardboard box, which I have uh, attached with some <laughs> elastics and also a uh, my belt because it was a little wobbly. So it, it works, it's nothing pretty. After I'm done filming this video, I'm probably gonna make a better case, but for now, this works. So here we go. And you see, that's why I need to make a better case because it's a little top heavy so it falls over. I think I also knocked out the batteries, so I'm going to need to uh, set this all back up before I can show you again. Alright, so I've got the batteries back in and the uh, Wii Remote connected up again. Yeah, so that's one of the main flaws right now. The, uh, the box is really, really bad. Um, so, it works, it's just really sloppy. So you can see, I can turn left. Uh, if I, let me get back up there. I can turn, uh, turn left, turn right, it all works fine. So my next step is going to be um, making a better case. I'm probably going to take, um, you probably noticed, the bottom is actually just an old remote control car that was broken. So I ripped it apart and just salvaged the, uh, the battery holder and the two motors on it. So basically it's just a piece of plastic with a couple motors and a battery holder on it. And then all the components are inside that cardboard box. Um, so I'm probably going to take the, uh, the rest of the car, put it back together, and then probably just... Um, wrapped in bubble wrap, put everything else on top of that, like taped or something. But I'm not sure yet, that's not important. What's important is that it all works. So yeah, um, I'll shut it down, bring it inside, and I'll show you how it works. Alright, so here we are on my wonderful desk. It's kind of a mess since I've been using it just to, for all my Raspberry Pi stuff. But uh, yeah, I'll take this apart and show you what's inside. So I just have my belt holding on the um, hold on this box because I don't know I just have a better way of doing it these elastics weren't working too well so I'll take that off um, I've also got these elastics it's kind of a mess but I've got these elastics holding it on take those off too don't need them and then I'll get to the guts so we open up this box this is actually the box that um, my Raspberry Pi shipped in. I just, it was a good size box for all the components, so I used it. I was thinking about using a shoebox, but my shoebox was way too big. 
Alright. So inside of here, I've got uh, this power. This wire just goes out to the power supply on the outside. I just have it outside so I can uh, control it more easily. But I've got my Raspberry Pi, which has a um, Adafruit Pi Cobbler breakout board, which goes to a half-size breadboard. And then I have a bunch of male-to-male -male jumper wires. They're actually uh, these ones, also from Adafruit. Most of the stuff is from Adafruit. Going to this little circuit board that I made, which is basically two resistors and a transistor. I think I'll put up a picture of the actual wiring diagram. I forget who it's by. I'll write his name here too, but um, you can see it from the control. Um, on the side, it's just 5 volt power to power the board. Here, it's ground, and then the eight in between all go through a resistor to this transistor, which um, pulls the signal pin to ground, which lets this um, eight channel Saint Smart relay board run off of uh, only five volts. So I just use a 3.3 volt signal, which is what the Pi outputs, to flip these transistors. Or, yeah, flip those transistors. Um, then here I've got my relay board. I'll put in a, a wiring diagram of what I did here. But basically, I have um, 12 volt power coming from in here, from the, uh, you can't see it, from the car that's down here, coming into these two relays. These two right here. And then, um, so if this is on, it'll allow power through to these two. And if this one's on, it'll allow power to, through to these two. And these two, it's kind of like um, a, an each bridge, but it only uses two relays because they're um, they're not just on and off. They're like connect. If there's three pins, it connects A and B. Sorry, if it's if there's three pins, it connects A and B or B and C. So I basically made an H bridge out of just two relays, and then I have a master power on this or yeah, this third one. So so um here these wheels can turn either forwards or backwards, depending on which way the H bridge is switched, and the front can turn either left or right, depending on which way the other H bridge is switched. So it's actually pretty simple. Um, the reason it took me so long to make this is because I've just been waiting and waiting and waiting for this relay board to come in. But, uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, just post them in the comments or the, yeah, put them in the comments so I can answer them. And I'll try to, I'll try to answer them for you. Um, oh yeah, also, if you're wondering, these are all rechargeable double A's, so they provide 1.2 volts, not 1.5. So 1.2 times 4 is 4.8, which is within the range of the Raspberry Pi's power supply. Um, if I had used non-rechargeables, they would have been um, 1.5 volts, which make a total of 6 volts, which would probably blow the Pi. Um, but because they're rechargeables, they're within the range. I'm thinking for Mark II, I'm going to have... Um, I'm not sure how I'm going to do this yet. I, need, I basically need two pulse with modulation pins. One that's going to... Um, be run through a MOSFET, or maybe just a transistor, depending on how much voltage it needs, which will um, make variable speed here on the back wheels. And then at the front, I'll either use a, I'll probably use a SEPA motor. Um, no, sorry, not a SEPA motor, a servo. Probably a servo to control the angle of these. But I might use um, pulse width modulation just to control how how far each direction is going. Um, as well as that, I think I'll have a beefier power supply, and I'll get a switching um, power regulator, as opposed to a linear one, because they're more efficient, um, which will knock it down to 5 volts, which the Pi can use safely. So, yeah. Um, if you have any questions, post them in the comments, and that's it. See ya. One last note, um, a lot of you are probably going to want to know, or to see the code, so here it is. Um, I import this file, GPIO clean or er, clean up GPIOs, which is just another file I wrote. I just have it imported as a module, and basically what it does is it just um, sets all of the pins to a GPIO out, sets them all to zero, and then calls the cleanup function. Because if you just call cleanup without setting them all to zero, when you turn them back on, when you set them up again and set them to a GPIO dot out, then they turn on. Um, as opposed to being staying off. So basically this, um, you can either run it as its own script or as a module, and it works well. Um, I also have GPIOs, CWID, which is the Wii Remote thing, um, and uh, Sleep from the Time 
um, from the time module. So I just set it to board just because that's what I like. Um, set up some pins just so it's easier to call them. And then I have a connect function which is really simple. And then I have two functions here which basically run through all the ifs. This one that is um, should move. They're named pretty badly but um, you pass in the remote. And then if the buttons is C W I I D A, um, then set them one way. If it sorry, I'm explaining this really poorly. So if it's if A is held down, then it goes into a second um, nested if. So if B is not held down, so A but not B, then go forwards. If B is also held down, then do nothing because if you add forwards and backwards at the same time, it would just kind of get all screwed up. Um, and then out of that nest. If B is held down, you don't need to check if A is head held down because you already did that up here. So if B is held down, then just turn, um, then just tell it to go in reverse. And if anything else, so if A is not, if A is held down, sorry, if A is not held down or B is not held down, then just set them both off. And then the should turn one, um, it reads the um, one of the three. I don't remember which one. One of the three variables from the um, accelerometer on the Wii remote and then just if it's less than 115 so if it's tilted about I don't know 20 25 degrees um, then turn right if it's somewhere in the middle then do nothing and if it's tilted about 25 degrees left then turn left and then I just have this disconnect function which calls this file over here that I have um, it just says closing boot of the connection and then it calls the built-in exit function and passes the Wii remote as the um, as the arguments. And then the main script is pretty simple. It just calls. It says attempting to connect, just so that you know for yourself. Even though um, when it's put in the box, you won't be able to see that. It's just I like to have that there for me. Um, and then it calls the connect function. Uh, it sets the report mode to button and accelerometer, and then it turns the LED to one. Earlier I was saying you can do whatever you want with the LEDs. Um, it's basically four binary bits, the four lights. So if you set it to one, the first one will be on. If you set it to two, just the second one will be. If you set it to three, one and two will be. Blah, 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 blah. If you know binary, it's pretty simple. Um, and then it says entering the main loop, which basically checks if home if the home button is held down, which I just have, which will call the disconnect. I would have used the power button, but I don't think C W I D or whatever it is. I don't think it has um, a variable for the home button, so I don't think you can do home. So I'm just using the um, I'm just using home instead of power, and then it calls should move and should turn, and then it just loops over and over and over again. Um, yeah, pretty simple. All right, that's it. See ya.